Reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance. Neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Jesus Christ did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on the cross. God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. First thing in the morning, the chief priest, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, it is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke to them again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man? You call king of the Jews. Shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Why? What harm has he done? They shouted all the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown, and put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who is coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing casting lots to decide 
what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right, and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha! So you will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself. Come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves. In the same way they said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? And some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked the sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today, brothers and sisters, we begin Holy Week. Now, we all know what a week is, right? A week is seven days. But what is the meaning of the word holy? Now, we often think that holy means anything to do with God. Holy are people who pray all the time or who always hang around church. But the word holy actually means to set aside or to set apart. For example, uh, these clothes that I'm wearing now, this is called an alb and this is a chasuble, these are called holy objects. They are called holy because they are set aside specifically for the use at the Mass. You don't see priests wearing this and walking around in the mall, right? These are holy objects and they're only used for the mass. They're set aside for a specific purpose. So Holy Week is a week that is set aside for God. Now we want to set aside this time because during this week, we'll be celebrating the most important events of Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection. So what can we do to make this week holy? So I'll share with you some ideas of what you can do this week, okay? So the first thing we can do is pray. Prayer. We can make sure that we pray every day this week. So you can go to your mom and dad and ask them if this is something you can do together as a family. So in the evening time, call all your family and get them together. And maybe you can read the gospel of the day or pray in the favorite way your family loves to pray. Maybe you can watch mass together every day together. But the most important thing is that you set aside some time every day this week to pray. Secondly, fasting. Now, we think that fasting means not eating. That's one thing we can do if you're capable of doing that. But there are many other ways to fast also. Maybe every night you have the habit before you go to sleep of spending one hour or even more time watching Netflix or watching TikTok or surfing the internet or playing video games or whatever is it that you do. So maybe just this week, give that up. Now, we are not giving that up in order to torture ourselves or because, you know, we, we want to, to do something horrible, you know, and, and be miserable. But what we are doing is that we are setting aside 
all the distractions in our life so that we can set aside time for God. And finally, almsgiving. We can put aside some of our money, some of our pocket money for the poor and for those who are in need. Now I'll share with you one simple way that we can do that. So imagine that on your way back from school, maybe you like to stop by and buy a bubble tea or an ice cream or something like that. So maybe just this week, you give that up. And then the $4 or the $5 that you normally spend on that bubble tea, we'll put it aside and we will donate it to the poor. We will set aside this money for those in need. So these are some of the things that we can do to make Holy Week holy. We set aside certain things so that we can set aside time and attention for God. Now, you know, we do that in our lives all the time, right? Maybe during the weekend, your parents like to bring everybody together and go out for a meal, for lunch or for dinner. So what your parents are doing is that they are setting aside their work, setting aside all their other responsibilities so that they can set aside time to spend with you. And that's really important, isn't it? Now imagine a friend of yours comes to you and says that she's having some difficulty with her studies and ask if you can help her. So what do you do? You set aside time for your friend so that you can be with her and you can help her. So families and friends do this for each other all the time. This is how we become close to one another. And this is the same for God. This week, we're going to make sure that we set aside time for God so that we can walk on this journey together with Jesus. And I pray that you have a very holy, holy week.